All right, back on figuring out this nitrous system for the Forester today. Uh, so the part that in the last video I said was coming in, they've all come in. There's some parts there, and then this is the main crown jewel here. So this is a one gallon fuel cell to hold uh, the fueling side of the nitrous. It's designed to go in the battery tray. This is from Nitrous Outlet. They, uh, they sell pre-designed ones or custom ones. This is a custom fuel cell because, as you can see, they normally have their regulator mounted there. Um, their regulator doesn't go up high enough PSI for the boost we're going to be running, so I had to order a Magna Fuel regulator. I've converted these fittings to work with this setup. So this is a uh, flip lid and twist. The fuel pump is already set up in there in the pickup so that I didn't have to figure that out. You can see it down in there. It's like a Walbro 255, so it comes out on the feed. Um, comes out in the feed line up here, which is a dash eight, and that's just the way that all their regulators are configured. We actually only needed a dash six, so it's a dash eight to a six. And then on this regulator here, we have uh, six coming in on the right, four going out to the nitrous solenoids on the left, and then a six return and the bracket we're going to have modified and welded right where that spot is so it's going to sit right here and then we're just going to have to shorten those lines up so that feed line will come in right on the right the return line will come from the bottom and go to the bottom over there and then this left fitting will go to the feed and if you look this fits pretty nicely in the battery tray sideways you look better first the AC can thing. <clears throat> so this is gonna sit right here. You can let that back down. Yeah. Uh, kind of out of the way, and then we'll just make a a wedge clamp here, nuts there to hold, so that it holds down on that bracket right there. And the regulator will sit right here, and then this AC compressor sits up higher. And the regulator will be in the middle there, um, and then we're gonna relocate the battery to the trunk. So we'll put a bus bar right here and then run the cable back we'll do that before the motor's in so that it's nice and easy to tuck it away but yeah that fits nice so the motor will be here that sits right there the regulator's over there um we're gonna make up some fuel lines too but we need to we need to mock up the regulator first and see what fittings we needed so we're gonna take this to chris at rise fab on monday have him weld that bracket up which i'll show you later and then basically we'll get that so it's harnessed in. We'll take advantage of not having the motor in so I can actually stand in there. We'll get that figured out. We'll put the bus bar in, get the battery relocated. We need to put the new uh, clutch master and slave in as well. Um, so now we're going to start making the fuel lines now that we've got the regulator figured out that it's going to sit in there. So um, probably set you guys up in a time lapse, but we're going to start running the feed lines from here and here underneath there so that we can start bending these nitrous nozzles we've got all the fittings and lines and then this is the rest of the nitrous stuff um, that we are waiting on this is the bottle warmer purge solenoid valve this is the progressive 5 controller which uh, when Kyle wires it in we'll show you guys more of that and then these are the jets for the uh, alcohol that we needed they weren't in the kit all right so we have mocked this T up approximately where it's gonna go into there we've got some fittings Put the ends on them, the PTFE stuff is tougher, um, but it's going okay. So these are gonna go under here. Um, they're not very flexible, but this basically snakes up under here. So we're gonna mock those up and the T will go under there. I don't know if I ordered unions or not to go from these. So I have to check on that, but they're basically gonna go underneath. Um, and then we're gonna start doing the return side and leave those a little bit extra long. Okay, sorry I didn't record the uh, PTFE lines, but it's kind of boring and tedious. So these lines go under. There's a union, uh, not a union, a dash eight split under there. These go under here. This return line snakes down along there, comes out over here, and the regulators on this car is on this side. This one will come over here as well, and then these lines will stay together, and the regulator will go right here. We cut them kind of long. Um, we just went to get some rivets. This is the IAG big bore throttle body. I should have recorded this, but it kind of happened last minute. Um, they don't come with a cover, and that's because you have to swap the motor that sits down here and then the tan colored gear. Uh, they're kind of finicky with how you put them in. There's a wave washer that sits underneath here, so if you're putting it together, uh, you can ask questions if you need to. And this is a 532nd rivet.
to hold this cover on. Um, they're supposed to come with them. When I ordered my throttle body, it did not come with the rivets, or I lost it in the packaging, but I didn't see it. So this is all back on looking factory. Fuel line kind of snakes under nicely. And it will go under there. So we're going to switch gears now and start working on the nitrous tubing now that we know where the fuel lines are going to sit and what kind of clearance we have. All right, I didn't film too much, just cleaning some things up. Clean this bracket up and got these both tightened down. Snuck the fuel lines under, zip tied the electrical harness down so that we have plenty enough room under here for the sensors and the nitrous ports. We didn't end up drilling these yet. There was a couple things we needed to do. Like the fuel system, spark plugs came in. We got to run colder ones now, so we had to switch to Denso Iridium Power. These are the IK24s. And then... We put the PCB tree back here um, and shortened it since we don't have the stock turbo here anymore. We don't need the line that long, so these hoses will come through right here where the AOS is. That's it. Finished up the throttle body and got it riveted on. We finished tuning the rally car on E85, and I think we're going to call it a, a day. Um, tomorrow we'll probably mess with the rally car, and then we'll get back on the nitrous stuff here during the week. Still got to put all that stuff in, but it's coming along pretty nicely. All right, fuel regulator is on. Had that bracket welded this morning at Rise Fab. I'm gonna have some lines made for that real quick. That's gonna go in the engine bay. Now, Kyle is here to wire in the nitrous stuff. So we got the Maximizer 5 controller up in the glove box right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then we separated the wires that we don't need and the thing for the gauge and the cable for the computer. And then these are the ones that we do need. So right now uh, he's looking the pin out up for the ECU. So these thin wires are going to the ECU. These ones have to go into the engine bay for the solenoids. And then we have to put a switch to arm everything and a purge switch, which we're gonna put right here. And then while you're in the relay for the bottle warmer and the pressure switch for the bottle. <clears throat> and then probably start bending some lines here while he's working on that. Um, right now we're just wiring on the kit. We'll go through it later when we get it wired up. But basically, um, if you're going to do this on your car, you only need, I think there were six or seven wires. Green white blue red yellow and one with the tracer and then the four big wires off the maximizer controller go to the engine bay the rest of the wires are for inputs and outputs that you don't necessarily need and timing retards for like msd boxes you can just hide the rest of that up there in your glove box All right, little update. We are going through the wiring diagram for the controller. And Kyle's got some of the stuff tied into the ECU. And the rest of the wires are gonna come out in the engine bay, which we haven't done yet, but they'll come out over there. And then I am working on bending the tubes and cutting them for the nozzles. So <clears throat> you have to link the purge solenoid up with the nitrous solenoid like this so they kind of tee into each other so the nitrous goes in and then the purge solenoid goes on the purge port of this if you're using this style solenoid so then both of these need to hide under here somewhere and we are starting to make tubes so i have put the jets in these are the 20 thousandths jets for the nitrous side and these solenoids are going to sit up under here like this so right now i'm working on making hard lines 
like this that are going to go on top of there and over so um all four of these will go to that distribution block and then the fuel distribution block will sit slightly next to it offset a little bit and then the other four nozzles will go to those so we know that we have at least as much clearance under there because of these connectors so we need to try to keep these kind of low <clears throat> without having too severe of a bend Last clip you saw uh, Kyle working on getting the nitrous programmer installed and linked to the uh, ECU inputs and then we had to do some switches. Um, we couldn't get everything done because it took a while and then I was working over here on the bench on the uh, solenoids and making the lines. So uh, what we did was put the nitrous controller up in the glove box up there. These are all the wires that you don't need, um, at least on our application. We can kind of go through this later if you guys have questions, but there's like seven wires that you need. And then we left this cable plugged in that goes to the laptop. Um, that'll just stay in the glove box. Because of the way we mounted it, um, it's hard to plug and unplug, so that'll stay in there. We wired everything to the switch that Nitrous provided. This is the arming switch, and it has an indicator when it's on. This actually arms everything. It'll control the bottle warmer. The uh, it turns the Maximizer 5 controller on and everything, <clears throat> and then there'll be one other button up here to purge. And then we got the program installed on the laptop. I'll show you guys that at a later time. Um, but it's working and it's seeing input, so obviously the motor's not in the car. So we didn't start it up and test everything, but uh, it was uh, the controller was working. And then we have to run these lines up under this green one goes to the wideband sensor over here and then those ones go to the solenoids under the car so they're not under the car in the engine bay so we're going to push them through this grommet right here and then they're going to sit over here because we need to put the battery in the trunk and whatnot so i just dropped off the fuel solenoid to uh, royal hose and brass they're going to make me some hard line fittings for the feed and return since the radiuses are kind of tight and that will sit there and then I'll show you guys what I got done. Um, I didn't show this in detail because I'd never done it before. So there was no point in making a instruction video on it, but now I've got a hang of it. So uh, these are the pipes you get. You have to cut them with a mini tube cutter and then ream out the holes. So I've been cutting them with this, which cuts well, but it doesn't have a, a reamer. So I had to use another one that has one built into the side. So once you, uh, cut them you got to make sure they're not collapsed and then i bought those two bender on jags um, this does two different size fittings you just swap this out here with that one uh, and it bends pretty good this was a test piece um, so you can bend it at whatever angle you want it took a little while to figure out so under here i have the nitrous side done it follows the curvature of the intake manifold and they're looped over here and then the solenoids you can just barely see them through there, so they look really nice. Let me uh, set this down and I'll show you. All right, so at this point it's half done. So here are the uh, purge solenoid, nitrous solenoid. All these lines are bent. Like I said, they follow the curve of the intake, so you can't really see them. The jets are in each one of these for the nitrous. And we have room for our connectors. So the next one to do is the fuel solenoid, which is this one. And it's actually, I couldn't fit all three of them in the gap there, so it's going to sit behind it over here, um, hidden out of the way, and that distribution block is going to be turned like that. And then those other four openings, that one, that one, that one, that one, will kind of go over here and go to that distribution block. Once back on the car, you'll see those two there, and then this one will be hiding like right there. So it'll still be out of the way, but the fueling has to come from over here anyways, so... It'll actually be facing this way where it says fuel in, so that one will be sitting like that. But yeah, it turned out pretty good. Uh, it, it wasn't super hard, but it's definitely a little tedious to get them to look nice. As you can see, they're not all perfect. I had initiated some bends in a way that I didn't like, but I think they will all hold fine, and they should be good to go. There's no real way to leak test these until we get it on the car, so we're going to have to keep an eye on it. But it fits pretty good for right now. Clearance is Good, so the next step 
is to finish the fuel solenoid which I will do later and then Kyle's gonna come back over once the battery is relocated and we need to wire up the bottle heater switch and everything and then the uh, nitrous purge button on the dash and we're still waiting on the clutch for the engine so we're not in a huge rush for that but that'll be next all right guys that's gonna wrap up today's episode uh, we got a lot of work done on the nitrous system in the next episode we're going to finish installing the uh, other side of the nitrous tubing get the intake manifold bolted on and I will get the fuel cell back from having the hard lines bent so I will show you guys that in the next episode and then uh, after that we're just waiting on our clutch and we can get this thing in the car we're also going to relocate the battery to the trunk so there might be some of that depending on when the parts come in so see you guys next time